Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and this is Cemetery Mary. We will continue our playthrough of the Twyla Route. Here we go. Things have been very quiet. I stay home. I go out. But nothing new or interesting has really happened. I don't hear a lot from Twyla anymore. I want to message her sometimes, but... I'm afraid she's mad at me. Or something like that. I haven't been a lot of help to her, and when I try... Well... I just mess it all up, I guess. Maybe it'd be better if she didn't ask for my help. It's not like I know how any of this works. Maybe she should have just interviewed me and been done with it. Then she wouldn't have to get frustrated with me all the time. Crovin's gone out today. Even with all this rain. I guess he just really hates staying home. I mean, maybe I'd be out too if I had somewhere to go. As much as I love the cemetery, walking around it in muddy shoes is less than ideal. I can handle it for a little while, but not as long as I'd like to stay. There's the library and all too, but I still have books here, and it's not really worth getting soaking wet for. The cemetery... I keep thinking of that dream I had there. I had to have just been imagining it, right? There's no way that was really Ed's ghost. Unless it was. It's it's almost like the book I read that talked about how ghosts were on a different plane. Is that the kind of plane it was talking about? But if so, how come more people don't see ghosts in their dreams? Maybe they do, but they just don't realize it. If I'm seeing ghosts in my dreams, does that mean my dreams with mom and dad mean... I wasn't able to consider that possibility much longer before my phone buzzed with a text message. It was Twyla. Hey. Hey. Hi. It's been a while. Is everything okay? No. Oh? Why not? Because we haven't found fucking shit. That's why not. Well, she seemed as usual. Have you been able to find that antifreeze? No. Even looking online, I can't find anything similar. I'm beginning to wonder if it's even antifreeze after all. How do you mean? I know that we think it is. And even if my analysis showed it was the same, I don't know. Something isn't adding up. Do you have any idea of who it might be, at least? I do, actually. But I still don't have enough evidence to go off and prove that it is him. Him? Reginald Tetra. Wait. Really? I know you said he was a suspect earlier, but... I don't know. He always seemed pretty nice whenever I talked to him. Of course he does. If you were a killer, would you act outwardly suspicious? He's probably only nice so that you don't suspect him of doing anything wrong. Still, what gives you the idea that it's him? Do you remember how I said I worked in the library for a little while? I do. Well, I remember he would always try to hide or cover the books he was reading, as if he never wanted anyone to know. But once, I was able to catch sight of one of those books before he put it back on the shelves. It was about poisons. I didn't think too much of it at the time. It was a while ago before all this started. But it stuck out to me, especially considering he was always so secretive about what he read. It seems very relevant now, doesn't it? You think he's been referencing that book? That he's poisoning people? It's a high possibility. At the very least, it's the only lead I have right now. Which brings me to believe it's him. I never trusted that man. The only thing that I have... The only thing is, I have no other proof. And I don't think I can get closer to him without appearing suspicious myself. Hmm... What if it isn't him? What if we spend so much time on Reginald that the real butcher gets away? I doubt it. I know a lot of people in this town, but no one has ever struck me with more suspicion than Reginald Tetra. I think if we're going to set our sights on any suspect, it should be him. She seems so certain of it, but she's given me no real reason to suspect him. Besides, he seems so friendly and sociable. He's been so nice to me every time I've met him. 
I don't want to think he would do something like that. Well then, Twy, if you're so certain it's him, why don't you contact the police? I'm sure if they look into it, they'll find something. The police are a bunch of fucking idiots, and full of scummy fucking people. We've been over this. Even if that wasn't the case, I don't want to be involved in any investigation of theirs. Can't you send in an, anon an anonymous report or something? Do you really think any of those reports actually stay anonymous? Do you realize how easy it is to get information, Mary? Even just texting this over the phone with you makes me concerned. If anyone sees these texts and knows what we're doing, it could be a lot of trouble. That's why I want to get this over with as quickly as possible. And the quickest way to do that is to decide on who's responsible and then out them. Just like that. Is she so certain it's him she's willing to accuse him just on a whim? If we can prove that Reginald has been purchasing large amounts of antifreeze, then at least maybe we'll have a bit of evidence to go by. And you'll turn that into the authorities? Because, I mean, they'll have to get involved at one point, right? Eventually. But that's for me to worry about. I just need a more clear indicator pointing towards him, and I'll be all set. It's just frustrating, knowing the proof I'm looking for is so close and yet so out of reach. Hey, uh, this is gonna sound really weird, but I have an idea that might help, actually. Really? Yeah. It's like, maybe... Okay, so, uh, if you can, I want you to collect a list of everyone you think might have been killed by the butcher and bring it to the cemetery tomorrow. I don't know if it'll work, but if it helps even a little, it's worth a shot, I think. <gasps> oh! She's going to try... Sleeping at their graves. That seems quite irreverent, but... Excellent job, Mary. Mary. What the ever-loving fuck are you talking about? It's hard to explain, but trust me. I think I can make it work. Whatever you're planning sounds stupid. But fine. I'll be there tomorrow morning, but I have a meeting in the afternoon. So it better be quick. And it better be helpful. If everything goes how I'm hoping it will, then it should be. You can't see it, but I'm sighing. Very well. See you tomorrow. Yes, you too. If this ghost thing is real, then... I should be able to talk to one of them too, right? Ed's dream proofed stuff in the real world for me, so maybe that'll be the same here. And since they were there, they can tell me exactly what happened. That... that'd prove it, right? Twyla met me by the cemetery like we agreed. She was tapping her foot impatiently in front of the gate. Took you long enough to get here. My bus runs on a schedule, I'm sorry. She had the list in hand like we agreed. Walking into the cemetery, we looked for the people that were on her list. People who died shortly around the, the time rumors of the killer came to be. After a bit of walking, we actually managed to find two of the people on the list right next to each other. All right, so we found them. Now what? Are you going to tell me what your idea was already? Oh, right, right, right. So... <sighs> Remember when you saw me and Reginald in the cemetery together? Yeah... Well, that's because he found me asleep on one of the graves. Wow. Just when I thought you couldn't try harder to be goth. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Huh? Continue. Oh, um, so... When I was asleep, that's when I talked to Ed. That's how I knew about the antifreeze. Remember. So maybe if I sleep on their graves like I did Ed, maybe I'll talk to them too, and they can tell me what happened. Oh, for the love of... C come on, at least let me try it. Even if it's just a weird premonition or something, maybe it'll offer us some insight. You dragged me out here for this. I'm trying to take this seriously, Mary. I don't have time for stupid fucking shit like this. I am being serious. Please, at least give me a chance. Fine. You have 30 minutes. So choose one of them. I'm waking you up when it's over. Okay, I can do that. Twyla wants me to choose one person to talk to. I guess I could always talk to the other when she's gone, but... I need the person I choose to be enough to convince her that I'm not just playing around. There's a boy and a girl here. I don't actually know the circumstances of their death, so... I guess I'll just go with my gut instinct. Who should I go with? Boy. I laid atop the grave and gently shut my eyes. 
It felt weird to be doing it purposefully this time, but I was prepared and made sure I woke up extra early today so that I'd be able to fall asleep with no problem. It happened. Just like the last time, I woke up in an unfamiliar place. But getting a closer look, this place seemed more familiar than I thought. I recognized this place. There was a road below my feet and buildings surrounding me. Looking up, I could see the sign on the post next to me. Black Oak Street. I know this street. It's a little out of the way from where I usually go, but I have been here a few times before. My shoes are wet. I looked down. There was water running past my feet. The trail of it led further down the road. It was a bit foggy that way, but I could see bright lights shining from behind the mist. I made my way over and nearly startled myself when I realized there was someone else here with me. I had found the source of the water. A terribly busted fire hydrant was bursting with it. Sitting on top of it was a boy I'd never met before. It looked like he was taller than me, but he also looked like a high schooler. Despite his body dripping with blood and the steering wheel around his neck, he seemed bored more than anything else. There was a broken traffic light that fell over, and next to its source, I could see an ambulance and some police cars with their siren lights on. I guess it was a car accident. Uh, hello? Diesel? <laughs> Diesel. Oh, I was wondering when you'd speak up. What a unit of a lad. I wasn't sure which one of us was supposed to talk first. You're, you're bleeding quite a lot. Are you okay? Well, I am now. Truth be told, I haven't been here in a while. I was kind of wondering why I was sent back here. But then you showed up, so I guess that partially answers some of it. I mean, I don't know exactly what's happening, but you don't quite look like you belong here, so... I gotta say, though, despite that, your presence, you feel kind of warm. Familiar, maybe? Did you go to my school? I don't think so. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't... I hope I don't seem pushy, but I don't have a lot of time here. Is it okay if I ask you a few questions? Alright. Shoot. Uh, how did this happen? Oh, like all this? I got hit by another car. Another car? Yeah, like, I was in my own car, right? I was driving to school, raining morning as usual, right? And I hit a stoplight, so I step on the brakes. Or at least, well, I thought I did. Next thing I know, I've got a car crashing, right? into me from the side, bangs me into the pole, and the next thing I know, I'm here. Oh my. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that isn't like it's your fault. Being here freaked me out really bad at first, but I don't know. I guess I'm fine now. It still sucks though, like, I was so close to graduating, you know? It was my last year this year, assuming it's still this year over there, where all the living people are. Do you know or have any idea why that might have happened to you? What, the crash? I told you, it was because of my brakes. You said you thought you pressed them. Well, yeah, I thought so. But maybe I was out of it or something. Maybe I hit the wrong pedal. Um, I'm so sorry, but, um, do you think someone may have done it on purpose? What? Um, my friend and I are investigating a potential murder. Do you think what happened to you was planned? Well, I hope not. I can't think of any reason why someone would want to do this to me. Well, maybe one? Oh? But if that really is the case, I don't want to talk about it. I see. Would it... Would it be okay if I looked at your car? Just to see. I guess. I'm sorry. It's okay. I scurried past him and the car is blocking my way, making my way over to the car that was clearly hit. It was definitely busted pretty bad. Other than the missing steering wheel, the inside of the car seemed fine. I looked under the car, just in case. Something was dripping. It was hard to see just what it was. I was hoping to get some... Time's up. 
I was awoken by Twyla, who roughly shook me awake. She was clearly running low on patience. Well, did you find out anything? Or did you just waste my time? Huh? Sorry, I'm still a little drowsy. Well, snap out of it. Tell me what you learned. Um, uh... He was in a car crash. He was on his way to school and his brakes weren't working. So when he accidentally pr passed a stoplight, another car crashed into him. And that's how he died. And you didn't know him prior. No, no, not at all. I remember hearing of a crash near Black Oak, but you said his brakes weren't working? That's what he told me. Actually, when I went to his car to check it out, I saw something dripping underneath. Really? How'd it look? I don't know. It was kind of dark. I guess I would assume oil. I see. Did... Did I help? Actually, yeah. You did. I did? I recently heard from an inside source that they discovered the brakes were cut shortly after the incident. Really? I never heard that. Of course you don't. Because they don't want you to know. Who doesn't? I have to get going, Mary. But I have to say, I don't know how you did it. But this ability of yours seems like it'll be useful to me. I'll get back to you on this later. All right. Twyla left to go to her meeting, leaving me stranded here. I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the rest of the day, but... I'm glad I was finally able to be of use somehow. I actually felt pretty good leaving the cemetery. That is... Until...